I know this is boring. I know it doesn't get clicks, but before you assume the extraordinary, make sure that you've exhausted the mundane. This morning, I woke up to a text message from a friend who shared with me this article. It's in the New York Times. It's called Orange Alert. What caused the colors of this snowy owl? And it's about a snowy owl that's been found in uh, Michigan. Snowy owls are usually white with little black bars. But this one is bright orange. They've nicknamed it Creamsicle. And the article is just about people arguing about what they think is going on. Like some people think it's a mutation. Some people think it's something else. I'm going to go over real briefly here without, you know, infringing on the copyright of the New York Times. I'm going to um, read to you some of the quotes of people explaining what they think is happening. And then I'm going to tell you what I think. I actually think that I figured this out. I am quite certain that when I tell you what I think is going on here, you will agree with me. So let's dive in. Julie Maggard, a snowy owl enthusiast, made a series of visits over several days from her home in central Michigan with her Nikon Z8 and a zoom lens. After hours of waiting at a respectful distance, she finally got the perfect shot of the tinted bird on a telephone pole. And I quote, my adrenaline was going crazy. I was so excited. End quote. Her pictures help make the case undeniable. The bird shared a color scheme with the planet Jupiter or a clownfish. But why? Scientists who have studied owls for years struggled to explain the bird's curious plumage. Professor Kevin McGraw, chairman of MSU's Integrated Biology Department, said the rusty color on the wild snowy owl is likely an expression of genes that are normally down-regulated, but that were environmentally triggered through toxins, pollutants, or other types of environmental stressors. So he's, he's talking about an environmentally triggered turning on of a gene that's normally turned off. And that is plausible if you don't look too closely at the, at the photographs. And I don't think he looked too closely at him or the photographs he was shown were some of the early pictures that were taken from this owl from a, a long ways away. And in those pictures, it really does look like this owl is just expressing the normal sort of redhead gene that lots of different owl species have, right? Barn owls are the most common example of this. If you look at this photograph of the creamsicle owl flying, it looks kind of like it's just got that red natural pigment that's showing. The red that's common in other owls. So that's one idea. Joffrey Hill, an ornithologist at Audubon, he disagrees with the idea that this might be a mutation. Instead he says, it seems unlikely that it has spontaneously produced red pigment via a genetic mutation. Probably what's happened is that Dr. Hill has looked closely at this. He's realized that this is not an augmented photo. It's not a photo with the saturation boosted up. This thing really is an unnatural color of orange, an, an unnatural hue of orange, which would mean that this thing would have had to have a mutation that, that generated an, an entirely new type of pigment. Now that's not unheard of. Uh, there are uh, very unique pigments that we find in certain, like parrots, for example, and uh, cedar wax wings have some very unique pigments in them. You can also get pigmentation from the food that you eat. And that's also been suggested in this article. Uh, maybe it ate a bunch of shrimp or something. <laughs> and it's, um, you know, just, you know, we, we hear about this with flamingos, for example, right? So Joffrey Hill said, Dr. Hill, he believed it looked more consistent with an external application of a dye. Hmm, interesting. Scott Wedensall also dismissed the mutation hypothesis. The most likely explanation is that it was de-icing fluid at an airport, since some formulations are that red-orange color, he wrote in an email. Miss Maggart, the photographer, she's skeptical of the de-icer fluid hypothesis. Unless someone comes forward and admits to pigmenting the snowy owl, there will be no effort to study the bird up close, and its rusty appearance is likely to remain a mystery. But ladies and gentlemen, I did my own research, and I actually think that I figured this out. The first clue is to look really closely at Julie Maggart's photo. It's a really neat photograph. She got a very, very good view. You can tell that on its face, the left side of the bird's face is more orange than the right side, which is very unusual. Normally, pigmentation is symmetrical. It's the same on the left and on the right. This suggests a little bit that this might be a spray of some kind, but what really gives it away is on the tail. 
Look, it looks like this thing was sprayed, and when it was being sprayed, the tail was partly covered. And then even more convincing still, up here on the wing, you can see that these covert feathers, this covert feather was protecting this covert feather when this was being sprayed. And it, now that it's, you know, been flying around a bit and ruffled its feathers, you can see that part of that feather was shielded from the spray paint and is still pure white. We do not see color patterns like this and natural feathers. They just don't look like that. I mean, there's a lot of variation in bird feathers. Don't get me wrong. Some crazy things <laughs> are going on in different bird feathers, but nothing that looks like this. This really does look like some sort of a spray of some kind. Now, what type of spray could it be? Is there just some jerk that went and just covered this thing in spray paint because he was being a jerk? Or could it really be that this thing was sitting on an airplane's wing and got sprayed with de-icer? And just, just look at how the de-icing process works. If you were an owl sitting on the wing of a plane for some reason, would you just hang out when these giant machines come by and start spraying? I don't think so. Uh, that is a very, very unlikely claim to make, right? Well, check this out. Look at this website that I found. This is from Michigan State University, an article in 2020, January 22nd, 2020. And it's talking about orange spray paint that you find everywhere in the forests of Michigan. Forest visitors may see trees marked with different colors of paint and cryptic numbers and letters. In most cases, the paint represents timber sale contract specifications. And look at that paint. They really lay it on thick there in Michigan. I mean, we do this here in the forest behind my house. People do this uh, just as part of forest maintenance. They're trying to just mark trees that they think might fall on the trail and so that we need to get rid of them. And they do little X's on them and so on. And then later on, a crew will come through and actually cut the trees. So you've got some some sort of a like tree expert who walks around. In this case, in Michigan, they're, they're marking the trees that are for sale. It's just typical forest management stuff. And yeah, they really lay it on thick and they use the exact same pigment that this owl is showing. Maybe she's born with it. Or maybe it's just lager spray paint. I know this is boring. I know it doesn't get clicks, but before you assume the extraordinary, make sure that you've exhausted the mundane.